Hi, seventh grade. Today's lesson is going to be a drawing lesson on a slightly more advanced version of perspective than we practice in a previous class. Up until now, we've been drawing boxes in two-point perspective, but we haven't really taken any time to turn those boxes into anything. So for today's lesson, I'm gonna be showing you how to create boxes in a way that creates the illusion of a cityscape. So I'm starting out here in a way that should be familiar to you. I'm starting with my horizon line and of course my vanishing points on the very outer edges of my paper. And for today, I wanna keep my horizon line fairly light. We are gonna be doing some erasing that's going to require the horizon line to be easily erased. So if I want to create the illusion of a cityscape or a city block, I wanna start by determining where I want my streets to go. Eventually, we're gonna be creating buildings and those buildings are gonna be much easier to draw if we have established where a street might be. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the illusion of a road coming from the left vanishing point and I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. So I'm lining my ruler up with my vanishing points and see my ruler is almost too short. And I am creating these crisscrossing lines that will hopefully very shortly give us the illusion of an intersection. So what you can see here is I drew two lines from the left vanishing point, two lines from the right vanishing point, and where those lines intersect here is my intersection. And I'm actually going to erase out the lines where the street would be. To show where the road is. Now, depending on how high up you put your horizon line, you might have a higher or lower vantage point. For today, I moved my vanishing point up a little bit higher than halfway. That's gonna allow me to see onto the roof of some of my buildings. So I want to start by drawing the building that's going to be on this um, street corner. So I'm gonna start with a building placed right here. And when I'm drawing my buildings, I, I don't like to put my building all the way up to the street. I wanna leave a little bit of a gap because if you think about a city, there's always gonna be a gap between the street and the sidewalk and hopefully the opening to a building because you don't want your patrons to step out the front door and then get hit by a car. So I'm going to move my vertical line a little farther back and you can see I'm using my ruler here and I'm going to draw a vertical line and that vertical line is gonna represent the corner of my first building. So the rest of this should look pretty familiar to you because it is exactly like making a box. So I'm going to move rather quickly because this step should be familiar to you. I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side. And then I wanna create my vertical lines which are gonna determine the end of my building. And I'm always checking to make sure my ruler is going perfectly straight up and down. We don't want our buildings slanting. We want them standing perfectly vertical. And we don't want our building to be see-through. So I'm gonna erase my horizon line so that my building looks solid. And for today, we're just gonna work on putting the structures in place. I'm not gonna be showing you windows and doors just yet. Now remember, you always wanna leave a gap between the street and your building. In a future class, I'm gonna show you how to add the sidewalks, so you have to plan ahead for that accommodation. We don't want to put our building right up against the road. Now, if I want to add another building, um, depending on the type of city you live in, your buildings might all touch one another. So I'm gonna show how to add a building on that's touching an existing building. And notice we're starting in the front and we're working our way back. That's gonna be better for us because if we start in the front, we just have to kind of add on to it. If we start in the back and keep adding buildings working forward, you end up having a lot of overlapping which causes you to have to do a lot of erasing. So for now, we're gonna start in the front and work our way back. So for this one, because I want them touching, 
That means that the front lines of the next building have to line up with this existing building. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to extend that outward a little bit and that's gonna create the front of my next building. And from here, this is the, the front corner of that building. We can't see the other side here because it's hidden behind this existing building, which might be a little confusing until I draw in the rest. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create this front of that building. Now, that's the only side of that building we're gonna see. Because it goes above our eye level, we can't see under the roof. Of course, it's on the ground, so we can't see underneath it. And the other side of the building is disguised by the first building that I drew that's in front of it. If you use your imagination, you can imagine if we could see through this front building, the other building would look something like that. But we don't wanna see through it. We are drawing solid structures. So that's how you create a building touching another building when they share um, a, a front line. So these are lined up perfectly. They're completely flush. If I want to create a building that looks like there is a space, so maybe I wanna make an alleyway between this building and the one going next to it, what I would wanna do in that instance, ooh, I can hear some sirens in the distance. Um, what I wanna do is I'm gonna continue on this line, but instead of connecting it, I'm gonna create a space. So I wanna create a gap, and that gap is going to determine where my next building starts. And I'm gonna make this one kind of tall. So that's gonna become the vertical line to my next building. And from here, this should all look rather familiar. I'm gonna stop. So we're basically drawing boxes just like we did in classes last week or previous classes depending on when you view this video. But we're drawing them bigger and we're strategically overlapping them. So now what we've got is a building that's placed on the same line, right? They're all kind of lined up here, but this one has a gap. So maybe this is an alleyway, maybe there would be like a little garbage can there or a park bench. It doesn't matter. For today, we're gonna leave it blank because we're working on mapping out our space. If I wanted to, I could just keep adding and going into the distance. I wanna do another building right here. And for this one, I want to make the building short. I want to make it look like we can kind of see onto the roof a little bit. So for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave a gap. I'm going to start this one right there. And it's going to be a pretty short building. Not very tall at all. I'm going to go to the left vanishing point. I suppose I don't need to go the whole way. This one I'm gonna go to the right. Now in this particular box, we are going to see a roof. So I'm gonna end it on this side. Let's make it kind of wide like that. Now on this particular box, I do have to pretend that I can see the end of the box. So I'm just gonna draw super lightly and just pretend that I can see through this invisible building behind. We need to know where the building ends so we know which angle to create the back um, edges of the roof. So for this one, it's pretty easy. We can see the left corner naturally. So from the left corner, we're gonna go to the right vanishing point. And hopefully by now, you are feeling confident with your boxes. This one, we're gonna go all the way back like that. It's lined up, so I'm gonna draw from here to there. And since this building is not actually see-through, I'm gonna get rid of that detail. But it is okay to draw the entire box if it's helpful to you to get those angles correct. This definitely takes practice. I'm gonna do another building super quick right here. 
I'm just going to add it. We'll make these two attached. So now because this is a back corner, we know that the other building is going to share a same corner there. And a lot of this is a little difficult to explain in words. You just have to use your vanishing points depending on the angles that you've chosen for your artwork. And that will help you kind of work through whatever challenges you're facing. Um, if I wanted to, I could make this building look seamless, like it's a single building with two different levels. So I could erase this line, and now it looks like a single building with a different level. Maybe when I get to adding details, I could put like a balcony on top. So maybe this is some sort of like building attached to a restaurant, and the restaurant has some seating on top. It's kind of a cool option. Um, I'm gonna show you one more building before we get working. I wanna give you some work time today, but a lot of times kids have questions on how to put buildings on this side of the street. So I'm working on a different corner of this intersection. I want to leave, of course, a gap. I wanna make sure that there's room for my sidewalk. And I'm gonna create a vertical line. And on this one, I'm actually gonna cover the street just a tiny bit. Not all of it, just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna go towards the road, but I also wanna leave a gap. I don't want to create my side. I don't wanna cover my sidewalk. Same thing to the right. So this one is below our eye level, so we will definitely see onto the roof of this building. But it is gonna cover up a bit of the road. As you'll see. If you don't wanna try one down here today, you don't have to. This is just for those of you who might be curious. And of course, now is your time to erase away any of your unnecessary lines. We wanna get rid of those as soon as possible. those eraser shreds and there you go so for today I just want you to practice putting in some blank buildings we can always make decisions later on about what goes on those buildings whether it's windows doors balconies awnings we can talk about that later but we have to get the the space mapped out first so this is a really good starting point um, make sure that you're always using your ruler always using your vanishing points and always keeping your pencil sharp and keep some extras on hand too. Good luck.